Hey, how's it going? This is Jack coming at you once again with another tutorial. I know, I know, I have not done a tutorial in a while. I apologize during this virus uh, epidemic and stay-at-home orders. I have been concentrating on two streams a week with the Pints and Amiga game night, and it's taking up most of my attention. Now, there has been something that has been eating at me for a while, and I've been seeing on groups, Facebook groups, forums, qu personal questions that have been asked of me. How do you network a PC to an Amiga or Amiga to PC? Painlessly simple. This tutorial is going to show you how to do it. Very, very simple. Now, I consider this a subject that uh, I'm fairly educated in very, very well, and I understand it. Uh, quite a bit. I don't understand why it's such a problem out there on networking the two machines together. I don't know if people make it more difficult than what it is. That is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you how to do it. Simple, painless. Now, this is going to be on the TCP IP way of setting it up. Ethernet way of setting up, and I'm not going to go into null modems, I'm not going to go into serial modems, I'm not going to do it over a serial connection or anything like that. We are doing TCP IP. We're going to be doing some networking. Now, whether you have a big box Amiga or a desktop Amiga, like your 500, your 1200, your 600, uh, your 500, or you have a big box, a 2000, a 3000, a 4000, it doesn't matter. This is going to be an easy tutorial on how to get that done simple and easy and efficiently, okay? Now, if you have a big box Amiga and you've got yourself a 20, an, uh, an Amiga 2065 card, or you got a Hydra card, or you got a Roadshow card, uh, if you've got any 10 base 100 or 10, 10 slash 100 NIC card, you understand that you have a network card. Well, what if you what if you have you know a small desktop, a 500, a 600, a 1200, uh, any of those machines? How to, or even a 1000? How do you get Ethernet on those? Well, there's choices out there. You know, you've got your you got your plip box, and if you've never heard of a plip box, it is a sandwich device that uh, connects to the parallel port of the Amiga, and has a specialized driver that goes in your device drivers and allows you, if you have a storage device or if you have a way of T, uh, TCP IP protocol on those machines, you can uh, communicate with the internet that way. Now, my personal preference is a little device called the GuruNet. Now, I'm going to show you a picture here. This is the GuruNet. All right. And this is by a good friend of mine called Carlos, uh, by a good friend of mine, Carlos Santiago. He has a website called Electronics is Fun. Now, this device that you see right here on the screen plugs into the parallel device of your desktop model, Amiga, or any of the Amigas, any of the Amigas, from 1000 all the way to 4000. This thing will plug in and operate. Sorry, I said the 1000. I think there's a conversion that has to happen or something because of the weird parallel port on the 1000. So skip that. Let's go 500 all the way to your 4000 desktop, even your 4000 towers, 3000 towers. It works with anything with a parallel port from the 500 all the way up. This is, yes, it's basically like a plip box, but is a more refined, more robust, more uh, engineered, better engineered. Mr. Carlos engineered this thing to be awesome. And it uses the plip box device driver. He, he wanted it to stay compatible there so he wouldn't have to write a driver. This will plug into your 500, your 2000, your 1200, your 600. I have, I have several of these and I love this device and this device has not failed me. I'm gonna show you how to use it a little more later on and we'll get to that in just a little bit, but we need to go over some software that you need to transfer and talk to your Amiga, and your Amiga will talk to your PC. So, check it out. Electronics is fun. The GuruNet. You see a picture right there. The GuruNet. This thing is amazing. Okay, I love this device. 
uses the plip box uh, driver. If you've got a plip box device already on your desktop Amiga or your, your small platform Amiga, by all means, keep using that if you want to. I highly recommend Carlos's, without a doubt, the device has not failed me yet. Uses a micro, a micro USB adapter for power. So your regular old cell phone charger uh, will fit into that. And then that's where you put your Cat5 Ethernet cable right there. Plug it into the back. You're good to go. It's not big, bulky like the flip box. So let's get on with the software and everything that we need. All right. Well, some things you're going to need when you're wanting to do Amiga networking with the PC. My personal choice is Amiga Explorer. Now, you can go to Google. Remember, I always say all the time, Google is your friend. Go to Google. All right, bring up Google, your favorite browser, whatever, and type in Amiga Explorer. All right. And your first link that will pop up right here should be AmigaForever.com. I'll put the links in the description for Amiga Forever, and I'll put the links in the description for Electronics is Fun for you to check out the GuruNet if you're interested in getting one. Okay? So check that out. Uh, Amiga Explorer. All right? We need to go to that website right there. All right? When you go to that site right there, you're going to have the Amiga Forever uh, website pop up by Clonato. And you will see. Amiga Explorer network software makes it possible to access the resource of Amiga computer from one or more Windows system. Configure extremely, configuration is extremely simple and by default requires only a few mouse clicks on the Windows side. That is absolutely correct. Amiga Explorer is available as a standalone package or as a part of Amiga Forever Plus Edition or Premium Edition or any Amiga Forever license key can be used to register in the latest Amiga Explorer version download from this page. Now, you can click right there and you can download it, and you'll get a link to download. Now, I've already downloaded it. It's right there. I already have it right there. Okay. So, I'm, I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to cancel out of it. You can download it. Now, you can also buy the Amiga Explorer for ADF. This is your ADF purchase, and it's $9.95. It's, it's not bad. It's not a bad price. Okay. It's, it's nine dollars. Uh, also, tell you that uh, Google is your friend. You need Amiga Explorer on ADF file for the Amiga side. You can also hit the archive Tosec uh, site. You can Google search for Tosec archive and Amiga, and you can look for an older versions that you can get the ADF file from there. So. You definitely need ADF or uh, a floppy, the Amiga Explorer floppy, for your Amiga. Because we gotta we got to load the program on the Amiga side. All right, let's go back to the PC. Okay, let's close out this right here. I've already downloaded Amiga Explorer right here. Now we're going to set it up. Just double click on it. I have it sitting on the desktop. Oh, it's saying protect your PC, don't run, blah, 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 blah. Run anyway. It thinks it's something foreign. So it will pop up and saying it's prepared to install. And it's got the Klein Auto Amiga Explorer uh, front end there. And accept the license agreement, all of that good stuff. You don't have to do anything here. Trial version, the trial version runs just fine. There's no problem. If, if you'd like to buy it, you can click on the buy now. It'll take you back to the website. And it will give you the chance to buy Amiga Explorer, which it's $9.95 right there. So we don't want to do that. Let's just keep going. Complete install. Yep. Mm-hmm. Keep installing. And it might take it a take it several minutes, take it a couple of minutes. Let's hope it don't take too long. There it goes. Yep. 
And if you see right here, it, it put an icon right there. Put an icon right there at the top. Okay, read the documentation. If you would like to uh, read the documentation, that's entirely up to you. I know how the program works, and I'm going to give you all the simple part of the program. And we're going to skip past the read the documentation. Up to you. You want to read it? Take time out now. Pause the video. Go read the documentation. Come back. All right, you must restart your system for the configuration changes to be made to the Amiga Explorer to take effect. Click restart to start now. If you plan to restart, no, if you plan to restart later. We're going to restart later. I want you to restart now. If I restart now, I'm going to lose my video. I've already had the program installed, so no settings are going to change for me, but I need you to restart now. I want you to pause the video, restart, and then come back to the video, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'm hoping you restarted and come back to the video. If uh, you didn't restart and you wanted to watch the video all the way through and follow what was going on and restart at, restart at the end, that's entirely up to you. So we need to let's let's move this Amiga let's move this Amiga Explorer icon over to where we can get it a little bit better. Okay. Now I want you to right click, right click on properties, and you will see right here. There's settings inside of here. Now, this is where a lot of people get confused. A lot of people get confused on this. If you're doing a serial or a no modem setup or something to that effect, you'll need serial. Th this tutorial is not about that. That is a whole nother beast to tackle. That is a whole nother rabbit hole to go down to. And I consider it more of a pain in the behind than just acquiring a guru net, a network card, and going from there. Okay, you don't even you don't even need a big network card, a Rosho, a Hydronet, uh, a 2065 card. Those cards are super expensive these days. Just get the Guru Net. Just just get the Guru Net, and you'll be fine. All right. So we're bringing up the properties here. We have it selected on TCP/IP. Now, connection settings. Now this is where you're going to put in the address of the machine that you want to connect to. Now, depending on how your router is set up and how you assign your IPs. Now, I'm not going to go into massive details about TCP IP. I'm not going to climb down that rabbit hole. You need to set this up with basic networking knowledge. If you understand routers and IPs, your router distributes IPs, IP addresses, on your network and yours can be like mine is my router dishes out IPs at 192.168.0.1234.5 whatever I have my router set up to distribute IPs at 192.168.0.100 and then it it goes up from there okay and it moves on. Your password. This is going to be the password to the host machine that you are connecting to. Okay. We're going to connect to the Amiga from here. And I'm going to show you how to do that later on. We're going to come back to that. We're going to worry about that password a little bit later on. And you got to confirm a password. Okay. Options. Leave this alone. Packet size, 512. I've learned, don't mess with that. Okay? When I say leave it alone, leave it alone. Okay? Max retries. If you're afraid your network is going to choke or bog down and it's got to retry and retry, I don't understand why you got to keep retrying the connection for 50 times. The default is 50. I, I don't get it. If, if it doesn't, If it doesn't connect the first time, then it's not going to connect the 49 times more. So you just kill the connection and retry over or try and fix uh, what is going on. You can hit the about and see what version this is. This one's all the way back to copyright 2018 version 701. So, you know, there you go. All right. You can hit apply or you can hit OK, however you want to do it. OK. 
we have the program installed for the PC side. This is your PC side. Now, let's go over to the Amiga side. We're going to go over to the other side of the room, and we're going to go to our Amiga 4000, and yes, a real A4000. And I'm going to get the assistance of Taylor from Pints and Amiga Game Night to help demonstrate how we transfer files between the PC and the Amiga. So let's give me just a minute and let's go over to the other side of the room and we'll pick up here in a minute and be back here in a little bit. Hey, here we are back. We're over on the Amiga 4000. Yes, this is an Amiga 4000 with genuine hardware, very expanded 4000. So my desktop will not look like your desktop. And I am going to, uh, I guess you could say, a, a quester or uh, acquire the help of Taylor, he is going to control everything and I'm going to network everything and talk about it and tell you exactly what you're going to do on your Amiga site. So the first thing that you need is some kind of network device. In our case, we are going to be using the GuruNet and our GuruNet is plugged up. I've talked about this uh, earlier. The GuruNet is plugged up to our parallel port of our 4000. And this is a shot of the back of our 4000. It's plugged into the parallel port. You can see right there the blue Cat5 cable and the green micro USB charger, phone charger cable. So, you know, from your phone charger, your regular uh, phone, uh, phone charger voltage works perfect. Okay. This plugs into your parallel port of your Amiga, in this case, into our 4000. And we will go from there. Now, I told you that you would have to get an ADF or a floppy. If you have a real floppy or whatever, you need to get the uh, Amiga Explorer Amiga uh, program. And Taylor is showing you right now uh, the floppy. We have it. We have an ADF. And he's going to open it up. And what we do, Taylor, we just take this and do what with it? So all you have to do is, uh, so a, uh, Amiga Explorer on the, uh, unlike on the PC side, on the Amiga side, it's even simpler. So it doesn't matter if you're using a GoTech or if you've figured out a way to burn your ADF file to a real floppy, if, you know, you have a real floppy. Either way, get that floppy image over to your Amiga um, in some format and then just drag and drop a Explorer. Uh, that's, it's, it's that simple. There is no install there's, there's nothing to have to worry about or set up at this particular moment. Don't worry about those other programs uh, yeah. in the directory. Yeah, don't, don't worry about, about the other drawers or anything like that. Just take this A Explorer right here, and mm -hmm. you can drag it to dro and drop it to any disk that you have. Um, your hard drive, if you have it. It has to be on your actual hard drive or somewhere permanent on your machine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have two di uh, disk drives here. So we could put it on either one. Ours is on our main workbench here. Mm -hmm. uh, and we already have it here on our desktop. On our desktop. So now, on another beast, now we're talking about a machine that has some kind of hard drive solution yes. plugged into it. Now, you could run this now, straight from the floppy. You can run this straight from the floppy if you have only a floppy-based Amiga. <laughs> Hopefully, you got enough memory and you have another floppy drive. So yes. you can transfer files in some kind of floppy-based TCP/IP connection, whether it's Amy FT, I uh, mean Amy uh, uh, TCP/IP, uh, TCP IP or some kind of floppy-driven uh, connection yeah. program. Yeah, if you don't have and, a real uh, hard drive, we suggest you do uh, figure out a hard we drive suggest solution. You it do. makes it a whole lot. It easier. makes it a, so much easier. Uh, but you can run this program directly off of the floppy. Yes. Um, but when you do, you have to set it up. Every single time. Every single time. Uh, where if you drag it over to your to to a hard drive solution, uh, it's it's one time go unless you're done changing something you on can, both ends. You can leave out the icon if you would like. Yeah. You can leave Put out the icon. Dock. Our icon, we've spoofed it up with a PNG icon. Don't worry about that. Our icon does not this, look like your icon. This is the icon. default icon that That's comes. That's the default off of it. icon. So mm -hmm. there you go. 
Um, so drag and drop that somewhere wherever you can, or mm -hmm. run it off the floppy if you prefer. Yep. Uh, and so when we're doing that, uh, so mm -hmm. that's kind of step number one is there. And then when you have that transferred over or on your floppy, you're going to go to icon information, information. first. Mm -hmm. And then here in your tool types, don't worry about tool anything. Types. So on your tool types here, and that was icon information. I'll right, do that right, one more right. time. Yeah, do it one more time. So here you go. You right click. Right click. Icons, info, and I have the icons uh, highlighted. You can do the same thing from the floppy icon as well. Then the only thing you need to change is this TCP IP password. We leave our password as password. Password. Because it's No uppercase, it's simple. no lowercase. It's simple. Just password. And we leave all of our machines like that. Yeah, so. we have we have uh, seven Amigas and multiple uh, Guru Nets. We don't have to worry about, hey, Taylor, what was the password on the 500? What was the password on the 4,000? What was the password on the 600? Uh, I think it's A600, blah, blah, blah. No, we just keep password We're across password. the thing. We and keep if it you're, simple, stupid, simple. You know, simple, stupid. If you're worried about somebody getting into your network and looking at your files on the Amiga, most yeah. likely it's a PC user and you left mm -hmm. your network open. So that's, you know, yeah. that, that could be solved easily by a good firewall or something like that. But if they get into your Amiga and want files, what are they going to do with them? If they get into my PC, Unless all they're going to another... download is games and a couple of pints and amiga backdrops so unless they're another fellow amiga hacker but <laughs> yeah i mean my goodness so I mean, so we keep it simple stupid with ours just keeping everybody the same password so we don't yeah. have to keep up with multiple passwords and that's all you have to change on this end do not i repeat warning do not change anything else in these tool types leave them exactly how they are mm -hmm. leave them default only set your password to how you want it we leave right. ours as password leave so. everything else alone so just as a recap, remember, drag, go to your uh, your floppy solution. You can run it straight from the floppy if you want. Drag and drop it over. Then right click, and I'll show you from the floppy side. Right click, icon, info, and then just set mm -hmm. your password. You're going to default as a explorer. A explorer. Sa save it to whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, you know, Teletubby, so, uh, Goomba, whatever. What, whatever. whatever. Keep it simple across the board. If you have multiple Amigas. You definitely want to keep that simple across the board right. because once you swap from, we've ran into the, uh, we, we've done it. Oh, what was the password on the 4,000? What was the password on the 500 vampire? We ran into it. We realized that that was a nightmare. If you have one Amiga and one PC, then you're set. You're set. Like us, we have several. Okay, so after you get your A Explorer set, you know, your password, uh, your A Explorer floppy in, your password set, mm -hmm. the next thing that you need to worry about is your TCP IP solution on the Amiga side. Now, whether you're running My Annie, Roadshow, EasyNet Pro, whatever your preference is of how you connect. Or if you're connect, just running Amy TCP and you want to... Amy TCP, you're going super old And school. you want to go super old school and do it through terminal or, or through the CLI and, and do it that way and rack your brain down that rabbit hole, Go for by it. all means, go right. By ahead. all means, go for it. We're not that. Uh, We're keeping this simple, so without getting too complicated, we use a program called EasyNet yeah. Pro. Now, I know some people golf at EasyNet Pro for a program that is only fifteen bucks, has very little overhead. Which I understand if you're a Miami DX fan, uh, you bought Miami DX a long time ago and keys and everything, and you've used it and it's been flawless. I've used it too. I love the program, but my God, does it test the CPU! And has a little bit of memory overhead. Uh, I personally like EasyNet Pro. We're not going to go into the installation of EasyNet Pro, but if you do decide to get EasyNet Pro, it's fifteen bucks. My suggestion to you is do not do any of the automatic stuff. Install it when it asks you to go online. No, when it asks you for your username and what name you're going to use, what the name of the computer. Fine, you put those in. But other than that, tell it no, 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 and wait until you bring so, up the icon. When when you're installing, so from this point out, uh, this will be we'll we'll be using EasyNet Easy Pro. EasyNet Pro. Um, this will be different for your AX, your 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 Miami, your Genesis, your TCP/IP, however you want to, whatever. Oh TCP yeah, I forgot IP about Genesis. Yeah, 
uh, it'll be slightly different. Now, when you're installing EasyNet Pro, there will be a spot where there will be like enter in your company name and your and your and stuff like that, your code and everything. If you buy it, you'll get one. Right. Um. Outside of that, Google's your friend. That's what I'm going to leave it at. Uh, when you're installing EasyNet Pro, it's a pretty straightforward uh, installation. At one point, it will ask you to set up your network configuration. Now, when you do that, this will be what it will look like. You will get this menu now, right click, here. What, where did you click on to get to that, T? Well, I'm saying for somebody that is first installing it and they're going in through the install program, you will, right. it will well, ask you to set up your your uh, your network configuration, and well, this is the screen that you will get at. We have magic menus, so go up to the top of that screen. No, it's or? just it's just project in the network config. But it, okay. But that's if you already have it installed. If you're okay. installing it for the first time, it will ask you to do this automatically. And this mm -hmm. will pop up. Mm -hmm. You will enter in whatever IP address you want. You want to create. You want to create for your Amiga. You'll have your network mask. Yes. You'll have your gateway IP. You set that stuff up according to your uh, your router and your, your modem uh, settings and things. Mm -hmm. Now... When you're installing EasyNet for the first time and this menu pops up, it will ask you, what, do you want to configure your, your network settings? You say yes. It will pop up. Now, by default, what will happen is you will get none slash user defined. When you enter in all of this, and later on after we go through the other step that you have to do, and you go online for the first time, it will then read your, your router or your modem and populate that accordingly. Uh, ours is a Netgear slash Belkin, so it's already kind of there. Uh, so after no, you're done, no. uh, it changed it. No, it did not. It's still no. Oh, it did change our IP. That's fine. One one four. Yep. Uh, so, but ours is already populated and already ready to go. EasyNet EasyNet Pro tries to do stuff automatic exactly. for you. Do it manual. If you understand the basics of TCP IP and IPs and network mask and gateways, I guarantee you're going to be a 192.168.1.0. Whatever you assign from your router, 11, whatever you assign to this Amiga, ours is 114. For our 500, we do it 115. Mm -hmm. Or if it's our 600, we do 116 to indicate that it's our 600. Network mass 255, 255, 255, That's the standard. Your gateway of your router. Our gateway is 192.168.0.1. Yours might be 1.1, which is very, very common, or 1.2, which is very, very common. However, your gateway, however, yours however is. your router is set up. Then, of course, put Give your Give your Amiga a host name. And then you'll hit save. Now, you'll if you're save. doing a if you're doing a first time install, you'll have another menu. You'll go through it. Eventually, it will ask you at the end, "Do you want to go online?" I'm going to repeat this warning alert. When you're installing it for the first time, it will ask you at the very end, "Do this you wish to go online?" Now. Hit no or cancel. Do not go online immediately because there is one thing that you have to do before you go online and activate the TCP IP through EasyNet. So when you're done, you'll hit cancel. All right, cool. You'll double click on EasyNet Pro. You'll get this little uh, window. Then what you have to do is then go into preferences. This is very important to turn the live update off. Because if you do not, if you try to go online immediately after installing it, it will try to live update, and there is no live update. So you will never get online, and you will have to reboot your machine and open it up and do this all again anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just hit cancel, open it, and then open up EasyNet and do it and, and do it without having to re... Now, you will want to save this and then reboot just to make sure all of your settings are good to go. Now, after you reboot... You're going to want to do another thing because it's going to ask you what kind of drivers and everything you want. You'll select the appropriate drivers in its list during the install, but it will not put those drivers in there. It's not like it magically downloads them from the, the internet or anything no. like that. You have to manually put those in there. This is where EasyNet gets a little bit confusing or can get confusing mm -hmm. because what you have to do is you have to go into your devs. Mm -hmm. On your main workbench, your your system drive, 
Mm -hmm. Then inside of devs, you have to create a folder called networks and it has to be spelled specifically like that networks with an s with an s yes now ours is already here it's right there and inside that networks folder is where you're going to put your appropriate internet device now if you have a roadshow device that's yes. where your roadshow dot driver goes if you have a hydra card that's where the hydra dot device goes if you have an a2065 there's going to be the a2065 dot device drivers in there in that folder called networks we are using the guru net which uses the plip box guru device. net which uses the plip box driver because the guru net and the plip box drive uh, the plip box uh device has similar uh architecture as far as uh how they communicate with tcp ip uh mr carlos wanted it simple and use the driver from uh the plip box dot device Yes. And but his is more streamlined and better as you can see in the picture. So so this is where you'll put that in there. So you again you need to create that folder called networks inside of devs mm -hmm. and then put your device driver in there. Easy Net Pro will not work without that. So after you install it, after you set up your 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 registration, and then you set up uh, your you choose what device you're going to be using just as a default, uh, and then you set your network. You tell it no, do not go online. You go into pre project prefs, and you turn off the live updates. So that's project prefs. Turn off your live updates. Uh, and then also inside of here, just as an added point, if you want to do your interface config, if you want to get down into that, mm -hmm. that's where you select that's where that. You, see, that see, in ours, we driver. have the 2065, but, but we have the 2065 in another uh, a well, directory. Yeah. You won't, our 2065, as you saw in our networks, is not in there because we're right. not using a 2065. This menu will pop up on your install and ask you to choose something yeah, if to you continue. Yeah, you have an Xsurf, a Prisma. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. I mean, all kinds of. Uh, yes. Ten by uh, one hundred cards. So, and if you have multiple cards and you have multiple drivers yeah. in there, you can then plop in that card and choose that device and then go and it tells EasyNet, okay, this is the device we're we're gonna use. Now, after you've done all that, and you've got your your dot device driver in the networks mm -hmm. uh, inside of your devs folder, you've set up your network uh, settings, and you've turned off live updates, you can then go online. Online. Now, it will check, it will look, it will tag everything, and it will activate the TCP IP. We are now online. Now, we've already Correct. set up our, our A Explorer password. So then all we have to do is double click on our A Explorer. It will then launch. You have to have that window. That you have BSD to have that socket. You have to have that window. Now, basically what that says is our TCP IP is up. Correct. And our Amiga uh, Explorer is up. Correct. So that means that now over on the PC side, if we launch the A Explorer or we've set up the A Explorer to the same as what's over here. Mm -hmm. So we set the correct IP and we set the correct password over on the PC side, like which was shown earlier. We should then just be able to double click on A Explorer on the PC side and see all of the drives and all of the networking um, on the Amiga. And I think that's where we're going to go to next. And uh, Dad will scoot over to the PC and we will show y'all how to that process on that and actually moving something over to the Amiga. Right, and uh, just to just to refresh, the IP address for this 4000 is 114. The last three are 114. So, uh, 192.168.0.114. Taylor's going to show it there. Yeah, right there. With the gateway of the router, the router is 192.168.0.1 with a network mass default of 255, 255, 255, 0. If you have any special configurations and stuff like that, that's up to you to figure out. But we're showing the basics of router and IP configuring to transfer files between the PC and the Amiga. So, 
we're going to move back over to the PC <clears throat> and we'll continue from there and we will transfer some files over to the Amiga and show you how easy it's done. So we'll see you in a few. Let's switch back over. All right, we're back on the PC side and thanks to Taylor on the Amiga side for walking us through that. Now, one thing I wanna reiterate is that everybody has different uh, TCP IP stacks for the Amiga. If you understand the basics of networking, you know what that is, Miami DX, Roadshow, uh, EasyNet Pro, uh, Genesis, whatever you like to use for that. Now, if you like to use uh, DHCP, uh, I understand, you know, you like to get, uh, you like your Amiga to get its IPs automatically. You will unfortunately need to know what that IP is on the Amiga side. So you'll need to use commands and to check out how you can get your IP if you're using one of those other programs. We like to do things manual. I prefer you to do it manual. By all means, you know, if you prefer DHCP, that's your own personal preference, but you will need that IP of that Amiga, and that is very, very important. So let's go on to the PC side, and here is the A Explorer program on the PC side. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to right click. And we're going to make sure that we are in online mode. But before we do that, let's go to properties. Okay. Look inside of these properties. And our address, we've I've already set up our address, is 192.168.0.114. Our 4,000, the 4,000 that we're using for this demonstration, is 114. Our 500 is 115, our 600 is 116, whatever you prefer. If you have one Amiga, you set it to whatever you like. Our password, let's make sure the password, and on the 4000, we set it to password, all lower capitals letters, so password, okay? And we're gonna confirm the password with password, 114, and hit, oh, let's go over to the options. Let's go over to the options for just a moment and double check this. Packet size still at 512. Maximum retries at 50, leave all of that at fault. You can look at your about, okay? This is what we need right here. Your IP of your Amiga in here. Your password right there. You confirm your password. Hit apply, hit okay. Now, I want you to go over to the icon again right click on it and hit online that is activating the program to scan the network and connect to the amiga and and, and ping the amiga so what we're going to do now is we're going to double click on that and when it comes up a little window is going to come up if this window does not come up after a few seconds there is a timeout thing going. Something is wrong. You need to back up, repeat your steps. This is the Amiga 4000 right here. This is the work drive on the 4000. This is the WB4K. That's the 4000. I can click on this and look in all of the Amiga all I want. All I want. And I can look in the work drive. I can transfer files all I want. I can look into anything I want. There's the uh, Amiga Forever disk on the 4000, still active. And there is all of your drives. So let's say I wanted to transfer over, say, a picture. Let's do a picture of the, uh, the Guru Net right here. All right. Now I'm going to open up the work drive of the Amiga 4000. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to drag and drop, literally drag and drop that. And there it goes. It's it's going across the network right now to the 4,000. Not bad, right? Not bad speed. Not nothing to phone home about, but that's a simple JPEG image. That's nothing crazy. Now, let's transfer something. Let's transfer something else. Let's go look at another. Let's go look at another picture or, or a file or something. Let's go to my downloads, see what we got here. 
Let's do something. Uh, let's. Uh, mm, oh, let's transfer um, some Ethernet drivers. Okay, here's some drivers right here. Here's an LHA right here. Let's transfer that over. We're just going to drag and drop that in that window right there. And there they go. Um, here's some Picasso 96 drivers. Uh, let's transfer that over. Now, there we go. It's moving along rather, rather nicely. Not bad. See? Totally transferred. Um, hmm. RTG, uh, let's, um, let's do, um, uh, you know, I don't know. Oh, some best WB files. Let's move that over. Good program. Oh, that's that's six. Uh, that inside of that zip file is six ADF files. So six floppy images of best WB that we're moving across there. And see, it's going to show about two minutes and fifteen seconds remaining. I don't think it's going to take quite that long. But you know, as you can see, things thing it, you can transfer stuff from the PC to the Amiga and vice versa relatively relatively easy it, it's 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 not hard at all and uh, people talk about networking of the amiga like it's uh, this crazy uh, enigma thing that is so hard it's it's really really not and uh, you know i hope i hope uh, that this will help everybody out we're going to wait just a few minutes to finish up this little transfer right here it says it's got about a minute minute and a half left it's moving right along now one thing i've noticed about amiga explorer on the pc side on the pc side you do one job at a time do not try and multitask okay now if you want to browse the net while that transfer is going on you go right ahead you you go where you know you go where you want to. Uh, here's a Tosec uh, archive, so you know you browse you browse where you want to browse, and you do what you got to do until the transfer is done. Sometimes it takes just a few seconds. Sometimes it take a few minutes. Sometimes it could take an hour. It just depends on how much you want to transfer to the Amiga, and give it time and let it do its thing. Got about 45 seconds left. All right, we're towards the end of the uh, transfer here, so you get a real time feel, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that real time film uh, that real time feel right in there for you. And I transferred a pretty good size file over to that. Now, what we're gonna do now is is we're gonna jump over to the Amiga side and show you these files that were transferred over. We transferred over some Ethernet drivers. We transferred over some uh, Best WB. And we transferred over some Picasso 96 and we transferred over an image. So let's take a second and switch over to the Amiga side. All right, All right we're back on the Amiga side of things. We're gonna take a, take a second and show you the transfer on the 4000 and show you uh, how the activity, the disk activity is going. We're gonna take a second for that, so y'all check this out. All right, we're back. We're back on the desktop. You could see how the 4000 was receiving the files back and forth from the PC and 
Taylor opened up the work. Uh, Taylor, can you tell them about sure, all sure, the files sure. that just got transferred? So, so here's here's our work. I re-updated the work, so I just reopened it. Uh, and as you can see, here's all of the files that Dad just transferred over. Just some some quick little test files. So we got you know the Picasso ninety six stuff that he sent us. This best WB zip Ethernet. Just simple things uh, in the uh, picture for the Guru Net. So and I can actually open that up for the picture of the Guru Net. So we'll go over to utilities. I use PicShow or MultiView, however you want to do it. PicShow is really good about uh, opening up JPEGs. So let's open up and make sure that we've got that uh, that JPEG that was sent over. Whoop. Do not highlight everything. Do not highlight everything. There we go. Sorry about that. Misclick on my part and OK. And it's going to take a couple of seconds, but as you see, it is a pretty beefy file, so it takes a moment. And our 4000 is an 040 at 25, so it's relatively stock processor. And bam, there we go. There's our GuruNet picture. So yeah, picture of uh, so Carlos's Carlos Santiago's GuruNet. Glorious little so, device. So works with everything. Yes, works with all of your, virtually all your Amigas, and it will even work on the 1000, uh, but I believe you need an adapter. So Yeah. Uh, but anyway, there's your proof that the JPEG... Did. Don't quote us on the 1000 <laughs> part of it, though, but yeah. But there's, there's the proof that that, that, file, that file did, in fact, make it, and it did open up re relatively well. So there you go, and... Uh, yeah, that's kind of it, and I hope this video kind of, uh, helped you out a lot, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let Dad kind of uh, coast us out, and enjoy. So, thank you all so much for checking out my tutorial on Amiga to PC, or PC to Amiga networking made easy. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helps out. If you have any questions, you know, throw them in the comments. Contact me somehow. You can find me on Facebook and all over uh, social media. So give me a shout if you run into any problems. Remember, your TCP IP stack is up to you. That is your choice. Whether you use Miami or if you have any problems with Miami or Genesis or anything like that, it's up to you to fix those problems. It's based around your IP and making sure everything in your router is set right. Both machines are on the same network, on the same work groups, and, you know, the, the PC can talk to the Amiga. And even if you want to, you can uh, do, a, do a ping from the PC to the Amiga and get a ping uh, from the Amiga to the PC. If you understand the basics of TCP IP stack, uh, that's a simple little command. You ping whatever it is, 192.168.0.114, and you'll have a return ping. Uh, but, hey, I hope this helped you out. Any questions, give me a shout. Holler at me in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye.